There are, have been times where the, a young person has stepped into leadership and it has worked. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know those people, but I'm assuming that they were like Stephen here yes. and these others, where it says, brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit yeah. and wisdom. And I, and I think full of the spirit, uh, there's a, a huge amount of humility mm -hmm. that's involved in being full of the spirit, not full of yourself. <laughs> that would be the opposite you, end. Yeah. Yeah. The the and and this is I think where some people get kind of confused. They they think that the spirit means that they get excited when they're involved in worship time. No, worship right. should be all of our lives. You know, or they've just, learned how to exercise charismatic gifts. Um, exactly. Pretty much anybody can do that. Right. And so that's not. I don't see that as being full of the spirit. I think that's still pretty much full of yourself with a little spirit on the side. Yeah. You know. Amen. Got a little dash of the spirit in there, but it's really all about me. Yeah. And here you have these people full of the spirit and wisdom. Boy, that's one thing we're lacking too, is some serious wisdom. Yeah. Uh, I, I need more wisdom. And, I, and they, I, I need that. They're chosen to serve. And it's not like they have nothing else to do. I imagine these guys have jobs and right. they're working. And, uh, and so what they're being asked, it's a great honor, uh, but really, they're taking time away from uh, from things that they're already doing. Yeah. So these guys serve, and then it's amazing. Suddenly, Stephen, and Stephen's sort of an echo of Peter. We All we know about him is he's one of the guys helping the widows. And then suddenly, um, he's doing signs and wonders. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and he's getting persecuted, uh, uber persecuted. Uh, yeah. and, and it's interesting. I, I wonder what Luke is up to, because Stephen's, Stephen's speech is pretty lengthy, but it's almost like, like Luke wants... Uh, uh, Theophilus or whomever to get a feel for uh, the history of the Jewish people. And yeah, because he, he doesn't say he, he gave a history. He gives the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we read it, and it's a yeah. great recap. If you, if you want an introduction to the uh, Old Testament, uh, read Acts chapter 7. Yep. And, uh, and, and then he's abruptly killed. Um, yep. And he's building a case, almost like they're agreeing with him. They're nodding their heads the whole time. And then suddenly... And, uh, you and stiff neck people. Yeah, <laughs> you 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 are the next generation of the stiff neck people. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, their reactions weird, covering their ears, shouting. <laughs> Apparently, heavily demonized religious people, because uh, they're shouting, covering their ears, and committing murder. Yeah, another bizarre scene. Let's close our time talking about Philip, uh, who's not yeah. the most well known of the characters in Acts. We pretty much have one chapter dedicated to him before we spend the rest of the book primarily talking about paul yeah, yeah. <laughs> well let me read it so i'm going to do just starting at verse eight uh good transition verse saul approved of their killing him referring to stephen mm. on that day a great persecution broke out against the church in jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout judea and samaria yeah godly men buried stephen mourned deeply for him but saul began to destroy the church uh, like whatever the Sanhedrin had, Paul had it in full force now. Uh, going yeah. from house to house, he dragged off both men and women, put them in prison. Uh, a spark and flare-up of, of the kingdom. Uh, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went to a city in Samaria, proclaimed the Messiah there. When crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was a great joy in the city. Yeah. I like it that um, he's performing signs, but the whole deliverance thing is happening too. And uh, uh, when Jesus sent out the 12, that's part of what they're doing. When he sent out the 72, that's part of what they're doing. And now this third wave or whatever, whatever number wave it is, uh, same stuff happens. Proclamation, healing. Uh, deliverance from demons it's crazy philip goes into samaria and of course there's evil spirits there why because they're serving all these small g gods yeah and uh so those are evil spirits uh they've been given authority over different areas in the world mm -hmm. and so when, when they go into new territory 
first thing you're going to have to deal with is their old ways of believing. Mm -hmm. And that spiritual warfare is going to be hot because those demonic forces don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. They're not like, oh, okay, somebody from Jesus is here. Let's go. Let's clear out and go somewhere else. No, there's a battle. And it's the same here now. We just don't. In fact, even within churches, we kind of downplay the whole mm -hmm. um, demonic stuff. Yeah. You know, but we have God's uh, idols that we serve. Mm -hmm. we, we just might call them money or power or yeah. pornography or uh, lust or, you know, all these things that we battle with. Well, that's what happened to me uh, in March when we were in uh, South Sudan. And you right. Know, it was that, that was exactly it. Yeah. So, you the you know, this is a cool thing. Persecution comes along and the believers get scattered again. They, they almost get forced into, you know, it's God is on the throne. He is sovereign. He, the, the persecution comes in and there's a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. It's to, to say, okay, it's time to leave Jerusalem. Yeah. I know you guys have been having fun and you've been having your meals together and it's all been good. And uh, Philip's apparently done in Samaria because suddenly he's uh, on the road to Ethiopia. It's intimidating for me because uh, it's like, you know, do we get to do this stuff? And sometimes we do. And I think maybe maybe part of the message today, Brian, is that when the fireworks are happening, we rejoice and we celebrate. But uh, but really, the, the mainstay is continue to serve and continue to, to look out for each other and continue to preach the word uh, with authority to the best that we can. Uh, man, that that servanthood uh, of Jesus that's modeled for us. Mm -hmm. I, I, humble servant. Um if yeah. we can, if we can grab a hold of that a little bit better, and, and so serving isn't the way into leadership. Serving is the life of a leader. It really is, and um, for all of us as followers of Jesus, mm -hmm. um, if we're to walk in His steps, uh, that's what He—that's the way He walked. Yeah, Brian. It's from this end, it looks like you're doing a really good job. So thank, thank you for your service. <laughs> Seriously, thank you for your service and your willingness to serve. And I love it that you uh, you partner with people. You're generous with your resources. You're generous with your people. And uh, I, I think it's awesome. And you just keep, keep it up, my friend. 